Let's take a look at the new automatic mode for the event transform action. This is going to allow us to select an input and then use guidance to do some data modification. Traditionally, we've been using functions, but this is going to be a new way that we can use natural language to guide how we want our data to be modified. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have this initial action that has these three arrays. I have array one, array two, and array three, and they have a bunch of different animals within them. And now previously, I might have just used a bunch of different functions to get to some kind of end result where I'm filtering down the results. I'm trying to capture only unique items out of the three array. I'm trying to check out of these three arrays, which ones aren't included into the other ones. I want to reverse the order. I want to sort the order. So maybe there's a bunch of things that I'm trying to do. Uh, now, if I go ahead and I run this initial action, yes, I'll be getting to this end result where I have that reversed order where there's only unique items in there. And that's great. But if I don't know all those functions, it can be difficult. So let's go ahead and drag on an event transform action. I'm going to set it to automatic mode. And let me go ahead and I'm just going to update the name of the action real quick. So I'm going to just name it to update list. I'm going to connect it from my first action so I can use that data. Click into the input. I'm going to select my input here. I'm going to grab that test arrays that has those three different arrays. And in here, I'm just going to write. All right, let's do give me values from array two and three that are not present in array one. And let's do it in reverse alphabetical order. So I'm just basically making this request. I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. And then here we see that output. When we click save, it'll save the state of how this data is being processed. So it relies on the data coming in with that same structure. So if we are only getting objects and we don't have these three arrays, the data is not going to process the same. We can go ahead and hit save once when we're happy with the results. And I'm going to go ahead and run that initial action. This way we can see that the event matches up. If we look here, it looks like this event data matches that original one with the function. So here, now we don't need to use all those functions to do data modification. We can just use the automatic mode. And yeah, it's just that easy. One thing really great about the automatic mode is you can continue to develop it. So let's click back into that input and we're going to add in some more. So let's have it only show results that are one word. So we see like different critters that are two words. Now, when I hit generate, now it just shows tiger, swan, uh, penguin, and so forth. We can keep adding more. And what I like to do is just add these on separate lines. So it makes it a little bit easier to give the instructions as you do these different data modifications. All right, let's add one more thing. So set the first letter of the word capitalize. So set first letter capitalize and then generate. Now I'll look at my output. So it's updating as I wanted to, which is great. And if you ever want to go between other versions, you can see that there's a little cycle history on the bottom left hand corner. On Mac, that is command shift and then up or down arrow. And then alternatively on Windows, it is, I believe, control shift and up or down arrow. Always hit save when you are done and you want to save that state. Now, every time the data flows through, it's going to apply that data modification. Really excited to see how you use this feature and happy building.